Hi everyone, today I'm going to do a requested video and this was because in my last video I was wearing some Lashify lashes and I, I didn't really talk about them but I said if anyone wants to know more about them let me know and I would let them know in the comments but so many people said can you make a video or can you tell us a bit more about them and um, so I decided that that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually wearing them at the moment and the reason I guess that I was, when people asked for a video, I thought, yeah, I do want to make a video is because for me, it was something which was, it is very innovative and I'm quite hard to please. I think I've been in the business a long time and I've researched makeup history for such a long time that when I get sent things and people say, oh, this is a new thing. I'm like, it's not new. It's been around for ages or, you know, it was last popular in the eighties or the nineties. It just come back in fashion, but Sometimes I see things which are, I'm like, okay, that's innovation and that's something very different from anything I've seen before. So that usually piques my interest anyway. And in terms of, I'd seen like things for Lashify on Instagram or I'd, I'd heard about them like just through the grapevine, but I hadn't really, I hadn't, I just thought, you know, another lash thing, whatever. Um, but then recently I was looking at getting some new lashes in because I was doing um, a, a movie and I was doing a lot of stuff that required very close up filming. And um, I thought, oh, I'll have a look what's new in lashes. I mean, I've got my old favorites, obviously, and they're my tried and trusted and they are will be in my kit forever. But I'm always up for introducing you know, new products in general if they fit the bill. And by that, I mean, if they are, just best in class. And if they're not best in class, then are they really innovative? And why are they innovative? So so I like to keep my mind open about things. And um, it just all happened at once about three weeks ago. Roberta, who's on my team here, had done the course in Lashify and she's, mm, I really think you should look at these, they are really good. And then about two days later, another makeup artist that I know in New York called Bo Nelson, he said to me, have you tried these yet? And I was like, no, but somebody just mentioned them to me and I've seen them. Are they as good as... And he said, yeah, game changer. Okay, um, you should do something or, or try them. So um, I did kind of a course with a lovely makeup artist, a guy called Martine that's working on the Sex and the City movie and he's been using them a lot. So... I did like a FaceTime with him and I kind of practiced putting them on and then I started practicing on myself, on my clients, on friends. And um, and then I did another kind of face to face with Bo on how he applies them. And then I looked, um, I watched Roberta put them on and other people and I just thought, wow, it's, you know, there's, it's something that I can kind of get my own techniques for the more I use them I can kind of develop my own style if you like. I've got a full set on now and I'm going to show you how I applied them. So I feel like I've already done quite a long intro so I'm going to for the sake of not turning this video into a feature length version I've already done my one eye so you can see it's almost like a moving a real life before and after and um oh also, if you're new to my channel, if you haven't watched my videos before, this is not a sponsored video. I never do sponsored videos, I never have. So it's not sponsored, there's no payment or anything like that. I was sent these lashes because I was working with a client of mine on a movie, so I've been using them for that. But, um, so they are a gift, but they are for my work kit and um, it's not a sponsored video. So I only really like using things in videos which I think are interesting or different. And I really do feel that when there is a proper innovation or something which is really game changing, probably because I'm so interested in the history of makeup, when I see things evolve and something really new comes along, I do get excited about it. And I do feel that this is the case with these lashes. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you now exactly on this eye, what I've done on this eye, but I'm also just gonna show you roughly how these lashes come because there are so many different types and I'm just getting to grips with how many different types of lashes there are. But for me as a makeup artist, this is, apart from the fact that it's in the application and the look of them is innovative, I think it's the fact that there's just so many different types of lashes. 
That is a makeup artist dream because it means that you can create a bespoke lash so you can put some fluffier ones or, or you know, you can layer them. You could have some which are less black and more sort of ashy colored or um, chestnutty or, and also the effect that you achieve. So you can really think about this person's eye is this shape. So I want to open the eye or I want to elongate the eye and what's really going to suit their natural lashes as well because not everyone's faces and everyone's lashes can take big fake lashes myself being one of them um, so I'll just show you roughly how they come so they come kind of like almost like this but they're in they look like an eye and then all the lashes are attached to that and on the back of each set of lashes there is a number and there's a letter. It starts with a letter and then it's a number. The number pertains to the length of lash, so it can go from eight millimeters through to 20 millimeters. They are in more of the extreme styles. So they're extremely long. Um, I'm not sure if I'll ever use them that long, but it's great to have that. Um, and then the letter at the beginning is all about the type of lash. So it's pretty complicated, so I'd say if you are interested, go and look on the website because there's three different sort of sections of lashes. There's the core ones, which are more about just what I would personally use for red carpet or for clients or for myself, which are amplification, which is a bit like, you know, just a natural lash. Bold, which is what I'm wearing here, which um, give you the look of mascara, but very, very perfect. And then C, which is curl which are great for people with hooded eyes because you really get that lift and you're able to really see the lashes, it really opens up the lashes. And then of course you can mix and match. You can add, you know, um, different lengths. So I'm gonna show you as well how I'm gonna do that on my eye. And then there are, after that, there are fluffy lashes, which I'm just getting into applying now myself. Um, and they are a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more, um, well, fluffy. <laughs> drama which is again about dramatic lashes and then e which is extreme so you can imagine there are some incredibly long very 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 dramatic ones and there are also prismatic ones which have this really amazing they're all kind of amazing colors there is also a category of lashes called intimates and if you liked my lashes in last week's video then you might like those because they are they come in really natural colors so there's an ash color which is just not black but quite charcoaly so it looks very very subtle just being able to have lashes which aren't black but the colors are really realistic so there's a chestnutty color there's as i say the ash and the truffle and there's also a brown so um it just enables you really to create a lash which really, really, really suits not only your taste, but your natural lashes and your eye shape. So I'm gonna start by using the Lash Cleanser. And this is just to make sure that your lashes are completely free of any grease or anything that's gonna stop this bond from attaching them. So there is a, I guess an outlay at the beginning if you want to are interested in these lashes that you need a kind of set to of tools and of lash cleanser to get started. So there's a bit of an outlay at the beginning. I think it's a hundred and fifteen pounds the basic kind of kit, and I'm not sure how much this cleanser is, but it's kind of a setup cost if you like. Um, some of the makeup artists I spoke to actually like to use a spoolie with the pre-cleanse. Just to make sure they're really, really clean. And then I got sent this to dry them, but to be honest, you could just wait. Or just use a book, or just whatever. Because it does have to be totally dry first. Next I'm going to use my eyelash curlers, as I would normally. Although I have used these lashes without curling my lashes and they actually looked fine. I kind of curled them anyway, but today I've curled them as well. So in case it makes a difference, I'm going to use uh, my curlers first. So next I'm going to use the Bond. This comes in black and clear and you go through initially with, it's not really, I wouldn't call it glue. It's almost like a gummy effect. So you just go through your 
lashes from the underneath with the black one first. This is what they're going to adhere to within the length. You want to kind of keep them. It's almost like a mascara as well. So it's quite good because if you do have any blonde bits in your lashes or that just kind of um, sets them up. And then you wait for about 30 seconds. Next, you use the white bond. And again, just lift up your eye. And this one goes, say about a millimeter back from the waterline and just through that lower section of your lashes. There's different applicators for this. I've seen one which is like a pointy applicator. This is the one I've got at the moment. Now I must say that, I think I said in the intro that everyone I've spoken to and kind of talked to makeup artist wise about this, everyone's got their own little different ways of applying them. And I know some makeup artists who don't actually put this in the lashes, they just put it straight onto the roots of the Lashify lashes. So, and that seems to work as well. So I think it's, you know, there's a, like with everything, there's a recommended way to do it, but I think, and I'm finding this myself, the more that I'm experimenting and using them for work, I'm, breaking the rules or bending the rules and changing things a bit as well. So again, this needs to just get tacky for about 30 seconds. The other thing is that these lashes are in English pounds, 15 pounds for a set, which is really expensive for false lashes. Um, however, there is a Facebook group, and I know lots of makeup artists as well, who do reuse them time and time again. I don't know if it's anywhere on the brand site or anything, but I saw that there was a a forum where people explain exactly how they clean off the bond, then they clean them in alcohol, and then they are good to go. So um, that's something that if, you know, because they are quite expensive, that um, I certainly know as well, quite a lot of makeup artists who do that without any issues. So I guess it's just doing it yourself and figuring out what works for you. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into the lashes. I'm going to use B10s, which is what I've got on the other eye. So I'm about to put the lashes on. I've put them all on a tissue because I just feel like I can see them better. And then I'm using this applicator, which is a bit like an alien tweezer. And then for me, when I'm doing them on myself, I like to just be looking down into a mirror. So looking down and then just lift up your lashes. And then I guess you want them to be probably about a millimeter from your lash line. So about there. When I do red carpet and films and things, I actually like to put them a tiny, well, maybe half a millimeter from the waterline, but that is just because they're not gonna be on for that long and they're gonna be really intensely filmed and I want them to almost look like a, you know, a kind of um, almost framing the waterline. But I think that if you're wearing them yourself and particularly if you wanna leave them on for a few days, which I know lots of people who do, then you want to really be one or two millimeters away from that waterline. But and that's it, you just sort of push them into place. Um, you can, I know people that like to, as you go along, you kind of squeeze them together with your own lashes at this stage, but then other people like to wait till they're all on and then squeeze them and other people I've spoken to you don't even do that so again everyone's different so then it's just going along you kind of want them to be next to each other because you want your lashes to be really filled in and if you notice that oh that one went on at a funny angle or that one I left a gap you just take them off because it's not like glue you have that um you, you know, they're not really, it's not really set in a way. It's hard to explain, but the bonding, until you've really squeezed them together and push them into place, there is the option just to remove it and kind of wiggle it or re-drop it on, which again, I also really like. Because sometimes you think, oh, that's a really nice position. And then you step back or look in the mirror and think, mm, I prefer it to be a different angle. And that's it. And the other thing is, I was using these recently on a job and we were starting at so early in the morning. 
and I was able to get these lashes on so fast and looking really good and quite dramatic within about two minutes. Now, see that one, I've just put on a really bad angle because I'm talking too much, but I'm able just to take it off and have another look, lift up, and then re-drop on where I think it's going to be better. You have a little wiggle around. Yeah, that's about right. And then at the inner corner, I used a smaller one. I used an eight. So I'm just going to take a, an eight. So this is just a little bit shorter. It probably doesn't even look that different, but again, it's so nice to be able to have that kind of mix and match, which you can do with other individual lashes as well, but just to have this amount of different sizes and shapes. Another look that I've done on myself is to have eight, 10, and then 12 on the outer corner, which I also really like for more of an elongated look. So that's basically it. You can see that. And they don't really feel like I've got any lashes on or anything like that. And then there is a sealant. If for any reason, I mean, I know people who, some people who always use this, but there's a sort of final sealant called glass. This gives the lashes more of a shiny look, which um, doesn't always work for photo shoots, but if you find that you've got stickiness, so if you've put maybe too much bond on or the bond has somehow got into your lower lashes or something's happened, you can just go along with this and coat through the roots of the lashes and it just kind of sets them. But as I say, not all, not all the makeup artists I spoke to use that. And then there's this tool which that you've applied them with that you can go through the whole lot. And I've seen this on Instagram and I can't do it on myself. I think it's because the shape of my face, it just doesn't work. As a makeup artist, I'd always rather do it in sections. Um, but I have seen lots of people go through the whole lot. Um, maybe my face shape is just the wrong shape for it. But I would much rather, if I'm going to squeeze them together with my own lashes, I'd kind of rather do them in sections, um, particularly on myself, because I'm not that great with my own eyes. Uh, I always find it easier to put false lashes and eyeliner and everything on other people. But this is a really important stage because it means that it fuses your own lashes together with the fake lashes. So once they're fused together, they just become one thing. And you can give them a really good pinch at the roots as well if you want them to kind of almost curl back on themselves a bit more. Um, so yeah, so you go through them and then just pinch them all together. Sorry, I'm doing a really bad job of this. As I say, this is kind of, I've only been doing these for a, a couple of weeks, so I'm definitely not, I've not worn them enough myself to be able to really become a dab hand at them. But I'm sure if you're someone that wears a lot of lashes, you can uh, definitely have more of a sense of how you want to fuse them and how you want them to look. But yeah, you can see now that my own lashes and um, the lashes are kind of together. So that's kind of it. And then the other thing you can do, oh, I've put regular mascara through my lower lashes here because um, yeah, I'll, I'll do the same on this eye. But the other thing you can do as well is because the band almost gives you a kind of natural eyeliner. So you, it's like a tight line really, you already have. But what you can do is you could add a little bit more of um, a little bit of liner just at the inner corner if you want to kind of finish off that look of having a lined eye. Or you could just pick up at the outer corner and draw a little flick or something there because you already have that waterline. You can just use that. and. Um, and that's it really. Um, I'll just finish this eye. I'll put mascara on and I've got a little bit of eyeshadow on this one as well. And then, um, yeah, I'll show you them together. So I've just changed the angle of the camera and come in a little bit closer because I want to show you close up one of the reasons why I like this innovation. And that is because when I look down, you can see what you would normally see with fake lashes, regular fake lashes, is you'd see like a lash band or glue. I don't mean in real life, but I mean, as a makeup artist, sometimes, you know, photographers going really close to the eyes or for movies and things. And sometimes you'd have to blend in the lash band using an eyeliner 
or you'd have to kind of almost tint the glue to make sure it didn't show. So I just really like the fact that when you're looking down, you don't have any evidence of fake lashes there. So that's the finished look. I added a little bit of um, gel liner just at the inner corners of the waterline and a bit of highlighter and also added my mascara under my left eye. One more thing to say about them is that you can layer them. So I've just done one layer on this eye, but you can, if you want them fluffier or suddenly you think, oh, I actually want them longer at the out of corner, you can, particularly if you haven't used the glass to set them, you can just go back in, apply the bond to the root of the lash and then just add another layer or add a few more. I did try that on this eye actually before we started filming where I noticed I had, after I kind of finished them, I noticed there was two gaps that not that they were bad, but I thought, let me see if I can cut one in half and then just put two halves into the gap. So yeah, as I say, I'm just still playing with them. And I've not been able to, I, I love wearing them, but I have to say personally, I've not been able to make them last for more than a day. And I've done everything right. Like you use an oil-based remover to remove them. I've, you know, cleansed and not got any oil near them and done everything that you should do. However, I obviously sleep very heavy on my right hand side, which which I know I do. So whenever I've worn them for bed, I've woken up with one, my left eye perfect and my right eye all mangled. So, but I know um, people who leave them on for two, three, four days and they are perfect. So I guess it's everyone is completely different. If you've got any tips for how, apart from learning to sleep on your back, if you've got any tips for me on how I can get away with keeping them on for a few days, because I'd love that, then do let me know in the comments below. And if you've tried them and um, you have any thoughts on them, let me know. And um, I look forward to hearing from you and see you soon. Take care.